Good morning. This is uh, once again your friend Manuel Boy Mejorada. I've been uh, away for two weeks, uh, rather busy. Uh, on Wednesday, I was uh, in Manila to attend a libel hearing. Uh, the case was filed against me by Senator Franklin Rilon uh, over my Facebook post on his uh, anomalous projects in Iloilo City. And uh, so many things have uh, been taking place. Uh, in Iloilo and uh, in Manila and right now I just came from uh, my farm in Dao Capis and I park uh, on the uh, along the highway for in Quartero Capis uh, to uh, pr do this broadcast on the Ranger Chronicles I think uh, we are now on episode number 11 so uh, we were we would uh, I would like to uh, do this more frequently or regularly on a daily basis as much as possible. Anyway, uh, today is uh, Friday, September 21, and uh, we are marking the uh, 42nd anniversary of the declaration of martial law by then President Ferdinand uh, Edwin Marcos. I was um, 13 years old uh, when uh, martial law was, de was declared. I was in second year high school. I do remember it uh, very vividly uh, because uh, classes were suspended uh, for two months uh, when martial law was declared. So uh, we had uh, a lot of free time and uh, that was when I learned to play tennis. And uh, anyway, I went through uh, martial law from its inception until its lifting, official lifting, I think sometime in 19... 84, uh, I think it was 84, uh, after the assassination of uh, Ninoy Aquino at the tarmac of the Manila International Airport. And uh, today I understand that uh, there will be protests uh, in Adaloneta, in uh, Metro Manila, and other parts of the uh, country. Now, mm, my thoughts uh, on martial law... Um, I'll put it this way, I think uh, at the time when Marcos declared martial law, uh, it was the proper thing to do. Because if we look back at what was what was happening in the Philippines and the rest of Asia at the time, the spread of communism was rather uh, very fast. And uh, in most countries, uh, the governments were facing a very serious threat from communist insurgencies and the Philippines was one of them. So I think that Marcos uh, did the right thing in uh, declaring martial law because it was the only way at the time uh, to impose a military rule and uh, stop uh, the, the growing th tide no? of uh, communism in the country. And in that respect, I think Marcos succeeded and the Philippines was uh, spared from a communist takeover, uh, much unlike what happened in uh, other countries uh, in uh, Asia at the time. No? And if we look back at history, most of the Asian countries at the time were either uh, ruled by the military or were in some form of authoritarian uh, rule. Uh, and one example would be Singapore under Lee Kuan Yew and uh, the, the other Asian countries were also uh, ruled by dictators like South Korea and then Malaysia at the time and Indonesia uh, so uh, the, the mood or the temperament of uh, the times really required uh, uh, martial law uh, for governments to survive and uh, impose order. So, what went wrong was when uh, Marcos became ill and uh, he started losing control and the vacuum uh, allowed uh, Imelda, his wife, his widow, uh, his wife, the first lady at the time, Imelda Marcos, and General Fabian Ver, who was the uh, head of the armed forces of the Philippines, to slowly um, take over. Uh, the reins of government. So that was also when 
corruption became very rampant in the country and uh, uh, things went wrong a lot of things went wrong since then but uh, during the first few years of martial law uh, most people of my generation I think would agree that uh, that period was one of the uh, best times for the Philippines because that was when we saw a lot of infrastructure development um, and then there were many projects that uh, Imelda uh, initiated in the Philippines that uh, to this day remain unequaled and unsurpassed by the succeeding uh, generations. As uh, I say that, uh, I think uh, corruption is something that uh, turned martial law uh, into an ugly thing for the country. But uh, having said that, uh, succeeding, succeeding administrations uh, were also equally, if not, uh, uh, if, if not, uh, were equally guilty, if not more guilty uh, than the Marcos regime. And in fact, uh, during the Aquino years, we saw so much corruption, especially with the implementation of the disbursement acceleration program so um, looking back at martial law I think uh, it did the country a lot of good and if we just uh, uh, take away the, the uh, rampant corruption uh, during the later part of martial law I think uh, it was good for the country so this is once again your friend from Iloilo I'm here broadcasting from in on the national highway uh, in Quartero copies this is Manuel Boy Mejorada have a nice day to all of you.